Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, Uvalde police say they are investigating a bomb threat at Robb Elementary. Four suspects remain at large after a drug and gun bust in Refugio County. And a North Texas school superintendent in trouble with the law accused of solicitating sex with a minor. We have um, fairly quiet weather here down in the coastal bend, but boy, they are having problems up in the Lubbock area all the way down to Midland. And then, of course, the other big story of the day is that we have Tropical Storm Arlene, first storm of the season, and we'll be talking about that coming up. And Game 2 of the regional finals between the Shiner Comanches and Johnson City Eagles is underway. We'll have the latest in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. And I'm Karina Garcia. Uvalde police said they're investigating a bomb threat at Robb Elementary on Friday. Police say someone called the department's dispatch center claiming to have placed bombs around the campus. The caller also said he was driving around with an assault rifle. That school building has not been used since the May 24th, 2022 massacre there. Uvalde police said the area is being blocked off and the call is being investigated. So far, police have not said whether anything has been found. A North Texas school district superintendent appeared in court Friday morning after being charged with online solicitation of a minor. KTRK reports a judge set 47-year-old Michael Stevens' bond at $100,000. The superintendent at Itasca ISG, ISD, just south of Fort Worth, accused of communicating online with an undercover officer who he believed was a 15-year-old girl in Houston. He was arrested on the Itasca High School campus Thursday. Early Friday morning, Refugio County Sheriff's deputies found a truck stolen out of Deer Park. After a short chase, four suspects fled. The suspects remain at large. Two of them have been identified. In a search of, a tr of the truck, a substance believed to be methamphetamine along with marijuana and a pistol were found. Thursday night, Warren County Sheriff's deputies executed a search warrant and arrested 57-year-old Jesse Jerome at 715 Matthew Street in Wharton. Found inside the home were marijuana, cocaine, ecstasy, and several firearms. He is now in the Wharton County Jail facing three felony drug and firearm possession charges. El Campo's new police chief, David Marcarelli, sworn in on Thursday. The El Campo Leader News reports he is a 30-plus year law enforcement veteran who has spent a lifetime calling El Campo home. The chief was hired in May by the El Campo City Council. He succeeds interim chief Terry Stanfield. Governor Greg Abbott today directed the Texas Division of Emergency Management to send state emergency response resources as a flooding and severe weather threat continues across northwest Texas for the next several days. The Texas Tech University and campus in Lubbock closed Friday afternoon due to upcoming severe weather. Major highways in the Lubbock area closed yesterday due to flooding. Mm. And with that, let's take a look at your forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mac Bettis, who's going to give us our weekend weather, and it's looking pretty good. All right. Thank you, Karina. For us, yes, but for other places, it is very busy. In addition to that stuff happening in West Texas, here it is, folks. The first named tropical storm of the season, it's Arlene, as expected. Got up to a 45-mile-an-hour wind circulation. But the good news is that it's going to be falling apart within 12 hours. It's not going to last very long, and it looks like Florida will get some rain out of it. No threat as far as Texas is concerned. Coming up, we'll be talking more about the, your weekend forecast, so stay tuned. Mac, thank you. State Representative De uh, District 30 Jeannie Morrison joined us live on 25 News Now at 5 today, and she was one of 23 House members who voted against the impeachment of Attorney General Ken Paxton. That's right. In a statement, Representative Morrison said, I do not condone the conduct alleged to have occurred, and I'm not defending Attorney General Ken Paxton. What I do support is due process and the protection of the institution of the Texas House of Representatives. Our standards for these matters should be high. The process made known to all representatives was unnecessarily rushed. For these reasons, I opposed adoption of the impeachment resolution. And this brings us to your VR poll. Scan that QR code on your screen to vote now. The question is, do you agree with Representative Morrison's no vote to impeach Ken Paxton? Yes or no? We take a look at these results and 25% are saying yes and 75% stand at no. May I say, uh, mm -hmm. 
Representative Morrison told me just a few minutes ago when I asked her the response she's had from her constituents, and she said overwhelmingly for her vote that day. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to keep you updated on these results, and we're going to have more updates on 25 News Now at 10. The number of migrants illegally crossing the southwest U.S. border is at its lowest point since the start of the Biden administration. NBC News reports just over 3,000 migrants are stopped by Border Patrol each day. The number has dropped for more than 10,000 daily just three weeks ago. Authorities say the slowdown can be tied to the end of Title 42 and the return of Title 8. Now, under that rule, migrants who are caught illegally entering the U.S. are charged with a felony if they are deported and caught trying to re-enter the U.S. within five years. Investigators in Mexico have found 45 bags full of human body parts during their search for seven missing call center employees. The gruesome discovery was made after workers at two different call centers were reported missing over the course of two days last week. During the search for the missing workers, they found the bags in a ravine. Forensic scientists and medical examiners are currently working on determining exactly how many individuals were disposed of in the bags. Peyton Washington, one of two Round Rock cheerleaders shot in April, speaking out for the first time since the attack that left her in critical condition. Washington told Good Morning America her spleen was shattered and her stomach and diaphragm each had two holes in them. On April 18th, Washington said after one of her teammates almost got into the wrong car in an Elgin parking lot, the man in that car, 25-year-old Pedro Tello Rodriguez Jr., according to authorities, went to the cheerleader's vehicle, shooting Washington three times. Rodriguez is released on bail. Only five weeks after the shooting, Washington joined her friends at their high school graduation. An Arlington nun at the center of a scandal found guilty of violating her vow of chastity with a priest from outside the Catholic Diocese of Fort Worth. The Reverend Mother Teresa Agnes Gerlach dismissed after the Vatican sided with Bishop of Fort Worth Michael Olson's investigation. Through her attorney, Gerlach has denied the public allegation she violated a vow of chastity. Stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 6, the Pentagon has canceled a drag show scheduled for an Air Force base in Las Vegas. Also ahead, how a taxi driver in Tennessee made a Texas boy feel very happy. The Department of Defense has canceled a drag show that was scheduled for the Air Force Base in Las Vegas. A drag show was unable to touch down at Nellis Air Force Base on Thursday after defense officials shut it down on Wednesday. When politics get brought into social issues, um, things start to happen and usually it's not good. Brian Hosier is the chief operating officer at The Center, a local organization serving the LGBT plus community. He's disheartened the show was canceled at the start of National Pride Month. Fortunately, in the last couple of years in this uh, country, this environment on a national level, uh, 
you know, marginal community communities are a lot of times easy targets. The annual show recognizes the importance of LGBT plus service members and civilian personnel. The Department of Defense released a statement to Channel 13 that reads in part, quote, the DOD will not host drag events at U.S. military installations or facilities. Hosting these types of events in federally funded facilities is inconsistent with regulations regarding the use of DOD resources. Drag is an artistic art form and a form of entertainment, just like any other entertainment you would find at any bar in the world. Brady McGill, the president of Las Vegas Pride, says there are a lot of misconceptions about drag. He invites the community to come to their drag events and experience what they're like. Every month we have our Las Vegas Pride family bingo event. That includes family-friendly events, drag queen hosts. It's been going on for over 10 years. We've never had any issues. We've never had any complaints. We've never had any concerns about appropriateness. A spokesperson for Nellis Air Force Base tells Channel 13 the base commander originally approved the event. However, new guidance from the Department of Defense required the cancellation. Eight construction workers are injured, including two critically after a building under construction near the Yale School of Medicine in Connecticut partially collapsed during a concrete pour. Officials say there were no fatalities in Friday's collapse. Authorities say three people were partially buried under the rubble and were rescued. Officials say a portion of the second floor collapsed through the first floor and into the basement. An Iowa task force has completed its search for survivors at the site of a partially collapsed Davenport apartment building without finding three missing people who are feared dead. Authorities said the focus has shifted to shoring up the structure so recovery efforts can begin. The building has been unstable and needed to settle before further action could take place. A taxi driver in Tennessee has made a little boy in Texas very happy by returning his lost cap. 10-year-old Bailey Patcher and his grandmother Jennifer were driving on a road trip from Florida to her home in Texas over the weekend. To split up the 22-hour drive, Jennifer and Bailey stopped in Moss Point at a Red Roof Inn. The next day, as the two continued heading out west, Bailey realized he left his favorite hat at the hotel. They were already miles away, so his grandmother did everything in her power to retrieve it for him. You lost this hat in the hotel. How did you feel when your favorite hat went missing? Uh, I was very um, sad. His grandmother instantly called the hotel in hopes it was still there. He said they'd go look for it, and I asked him, and he said, call me back in a half an hour. So I called him back in a half an hour, and he said, yeah, it's here. I said, is there any way you can mail it? He said, nope. And I said, is there any way you can keep it for a week, because we'll be by again in a week? And he says, okay, I'll try. And I'm just like, okay, they're going to throw away this hat. His mother, Lily, even tried helping, making a call from Florida to Trinity Taxi Service. She spoke with owner Marcus Chambers, asking if he would pick up the hat and mail it to her son. To her surprise, he said yes, and only for a $10 charge. I mean, I'm, I, I get joy out of doing helping folk, but seeing that how it made them feel, they feel overjoyed now. <laughs> Just a serving heart, that's all I has got a serving heart. Evacuation orders issued across Japan as a tropical storm brings heavy rain. Officials issued evacuation orders for hundreds of thousands across central and western Japan on Friday as heavy rain disrupted transport and prompted warnings of rivers bursting their banks. Japan's meteorological agency said Friday that it expects heavy rain to keep falling into Saturday over an area stretching from western to northern Japan. It urged the public to look out for flooding and landslides. And of course, uh, that was the old uh, Mawar, which uh, slammed uh, Guam not too long ago. Here in South Texas, we know we're doing summer-like weather. North Texas is doing spring tornadoes and thunderstorms. And then in the tropics, we've got uh, Arlene in the Gulf. We'll have more details on all of that coming up in just a moment. 25 News Now brings you Storm Prep 2023. Your first warned storm team will take us through this year's hurricane predictions. Chief Meteorologist Mac Perez speaks with descendants of Indianola, a town that was wiped out from back-to-back -back hurricanes. Adarius McCormick explains just how simple evacuating really is. June 5th on KAVU-TV at 6.30 p.m. Storm Prep 2023. Stream it live or on demand on Crossroads Today Plus. View it and our Crossroads Today YouTube page.
Well, good afternoon, everyone. 86 degrees for us. Uh, obviously feeling a lot like summertime out there. It got up to a high. Uh, oops, it's missing. Uh, it's, I believe it was 90 officially, <laughs> and that would compare to 91, which is our average high for this time of year. But as I was mentioning, while we are doing you know, nicely quiet weather here. We did have a few high clouds drifting through the area. Boy, it has been anything but quiet uh, in West Texas. Now, as far south as uh, Junction, Ozona, Sonora, uh, even Fort Stockton saw a tornado earlier today. And if you go north, it's been really uh, howling up there with uh, severe thunderstorms rolling through the Lubbock area. Uh, all of that is now past Lubbock, and it's basically in the eastern portions of the Panhandle. But you can see that nasty line going up into Kansas through all of West Texas, all the way down to the I-20 corridor. So um, anybody in that neighborhood traveling for this weekend is going to be kind of uh, check one. surprised by that stuff. Uh, as you can see right about here, we still have the tornado warning in red uh, down there in uh, the... Um, the Midland Odessa area, and of course, I don't know that's Fort Stockton. Midland Odessa would be up here. And they've not, aside from all that, now they have flood warnings because of two to four inches of rain that has fallen today. All right, well, that being said, that big cluster of storms, now we're going into the future here, that big cluster of storms will be rolling eastward into the Dallas area. Pieces of it are going to break down and come down toward the I-35 corridor, which is San Antonio, Austin. And we're going to have to watch this because overnight uh, it should fall apart right there at uh, about Austin. But you just can't rule these things out once they get going. And then again on Saturday, same deal. Big storms fire here, sort of drift into our area. So we have a low grade chance of seeing some of that activity. Obviously, they're going to get the big stuff. Well, talking about big stuff, we have the first tropical storm of the season. This is Arlene. It was on, upgraded at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Hurricane Hunters went into it and came out with a 45 mile an hour wind circulation. Now, the storm is what we call asymmetrical. The rain and clouds are north and then the wind is south. So it's not well organized and it's not expected to strengthen much. In fact, it should only last as a tropical storm for six, maybe 12 hours at the most. And by tomorrow evening, it should uh, collapse into a remnant low. And as it degenerates, uh, it will push a lot of moisture up through Florida. So South Florida, even though it won't be hit by the storm directly. We'll get probably four to maybe even six inches of rain as that comes through. All of that moisture is going to follow the upper winds. You can see it right there. Once it falls apart here, the upper winds are going to take all that moisture. And even the Bahamas are probably going to get a lot of heavy rain out of it. <clears throat> Just so that you know how the pattern usually works. Remember, it's June too soon, July standby, August you must. September to remember, and that's the peak of the hurricane season, which is September the 10th. So that we get a tropical storm at the very beginning of the season is a little bit interesting. Hopefully it may, it possibly will be something uh, that we'll have to deal with. 91 tomorrow in Port Lavaca, and we're looking at our seven day forecast. Isolated showers possible during the afternoon hours all the way through the middle part of next week. That's your seven day forecast. Just want to remind everybody, we've got a QR code. If you scan that, you can put Crossroads Today on your phone and take us wherever you need to go. And that is it from the weather front. We'll toss it over to Karina. Thanks, Mac. And now here's Sports Director Gina Perez. Local volleyball teams will be competing at a local college. We have the latest coming up after the break.
At a crossroads, the Shiner Comanches faced off in the regional finals against the Johnson City Eagles for game one yesterday. Let's check out the highlights. The Comanches were down to two to one in the top of the fourth inning, but thanks to a Drew Winsky RBI double, the game was now tied. And one inning later, center fielder Landon Poehler would come up to the bat and he would hit a moonshot over the left field wall to take a two run lead. Shiner would just keep adding to its lead and eventually get in prime position with a shot to the outfield for Polar yet again coming up clutch with another big hit to bring a run to put Shiner up three. But Johnson City was not done yet. They continued to fight, including a double to start off the final inning of play, but that would be it. They could not do anything else and Shiner would go on to win game one five to two. Now game two of the regional finals is on is starting right now and it started at five o'clock and it, it is a defensive battle. The score is zero to zero heading into the fifth inning or after the fifth inning of play rather and Shiner have had a couple of base runners but left them stranded on bases. We'll keep you updated with the final in that one at 10. The Victoria Generals lose again in another walk off fashion after leading in what would have been the final inning of play last night. In game one, the Generals lost after heading into the final inning, but last night was a different story. The Generals trailed heading into the ninth by five runs, but would battle back and score five runs to tie the game and send it into extra innings. The Generals took the lead for the second time of the game in the 10th but would lose off another walk-off. The Generals play the Bombers tonight at 7, and the Generals will have its first home game Sunday at Riverside Stadium. Hopefully they will get their first win either tonight or in front of their home crowd. First pitch is at 7 o'clock. Oh, and it's a free game to attend. A summer volleyball league starts next week and will feature many girls athletes competing on the court. A total of 14 teams and 132 athletes will be competing at Victoria College. Teams from Victoria East, West, St. Joseph, Quero, and more will be in attendance. The girls will compete every Thursday and in June and July. Each team will play two games every Thursday and the games start at 445 in the afternoon and it could continue through 10 p.m. Each game will be for seating and then at the end of the, each month there will be a single elimination tournament for a medal. All games will be streamed on the Southern Swing Volleyball Facebook page. And if you would like more information, you can contact Jody Jenkins at 361-210-6876. Well, attention all anglers. Tomorrow is June 3rd, meaning it's designated free fishing day in Texas. Each year on the first Saturday in June, fishermen from all around the state can go to any public water body in the state and fish without a fishing license. Some local bodies of water include Coletto Creek, Lake Texana, Saxet Lake, Patriot Park, and Guadalupe River and Lavaca River are all pretty good options. Who knows, you just might see me out there. Well, that's your sports, Don and Karina, back to you. Thanks, you know, now we're back in a moment. You'll meet a man in Wisconsin who walks everywhere without wearing shoes.
And finally tonight, the barefoot guy goes without shoes year round and he lives in Wisconsin. Luke Titus says for him it's just natural. Whether he's <laughs> hiking outside, shopping at the grocery store, or getting gas, he says he's probably shoeless. Luke says he goes barefoot because he believes there's some health benefits to doing so. And he says he's pretty much never stepped on anything or injured his feet while barefoot. And you know, someone who walks barefoot the whole time, you know, th that person's got a lot of soul. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, props to him, but at a, at a gas station, I don't know. He kind of yeah. lost me there. Think all yeah. the, the bubble gum he has to step on and stuff. Oh, <laughs> I wonder if he has any arch rivals. Ooh. <laughs> arch rivals. Oh my uh, goodness, Don. Your Achilles heel is killing me. Uh, oh. um, anyway, folks, we've got a good looking weekend for us. We're going to be on the very summer-like weather pattern, but because of those storms that are in West Texas right now, some of them, um, remnants of them, are going to drift into our area. So we can't rule it out that we'll get a couple of showers in the afternoon hours during the, the, the weekend, of course, but temperatures staying in the 90-degree uh, range. No problems as far as Arlene is concerned. And uh, let's see, in Hallettsville, they're inaugurating a new river walk from the courthouse down to the Lavaca River and sits in free fishing day. They're ax telling everybody to bring their fishing pole. That's right, you might catch Great Gina idea. out there. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right, thank you, Mac. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, we have one, Crossroads Today. That's right, and we hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 10.